morning. How is everything with you? I am looking forward to this service today and to being with you people in virtual Zoom. So come on in. Have a, have a, a seat and join everybody. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Susan, and this is Battleground Community United Methodist Church. And we just want you to know that whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are loved by God and welcomed here. And let us now begin our worship with Patrick's prayer. by God's grace that we gather for worship. And it is by God's grace that our lives are changed. We are counting on the active and amazing grace of God today. By your Holy Spirit, enliven our worship. Help us by our actions to be faithful followers of Jesus. For this we give you thanks and praise. Take a knee. 
Yes. Now I'm going to show you a picture, and uh, everyone at home is going to be able to see this picture. This is a picture of, what do you think this is a picture of? Martin Luther King. And what is Martin Luther King doing with all these other people? They're all back. They're all praying. They're all praying. How, what, what position are they praying? Show me. Take show me. They are taking a knee. Yes. Except for that person over there is kind of going like. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they're praying. Okay. Why would they pray? Why would they pray? Because they're thankful for the life that they have. Well, do they have a very good life? No. No. I think they were praying for all the splitting up the whites and the blacks to go away. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And a lot of people were mad at them for doing that, by the way. They were yeah, mad. Yeah, they were like, oh. They were mad because they were praying. Now I'm going to show you another picture. This is, this is something that, that happened pretty recently. Like um, in the past month or so, this one won't get big. But can you can you get close? What what do you see there? They're uh, taking a knee too. They're taking a knee too. So do you think they're praying? Maybe they're doing the pledge of allegiance. Do you do you go on your knee on your knee to do the pledge of allegiance? No, we no. usually do. This. Right. And so we talked about different positions where we pray, right? So they're praying. Can you tell me who they are? What do they who do they look like? What do they Police look? officers. Police officers. And and who are they in front of? Blacks. Black people. Okay. Now this picture was taken not that long ago because a lot of people have said someone's wearing a mask. Oh, I hope more than one person is wearing a mask. No, well, only one person is wearing a mask. Okay, so, so the police are kneeling because they agree that black people should be treated equally. So they are kneeling in front of all these people who really want the world to be better, okay? Now I'm going to show you something else. Um, some people don't like this at all, but... A lot of people don't know this about this picture, okay? Okay. What do you see? They're taking a knee. They're taking a knee. Who are they? Football players. Football players. Why are they taking a knee? Because they're, they agree. They, what do they agree about? What, why, why that do we... The splitting black and white should be going away. Okay, and so why are they on their knee like that? Because, because they're, they're praying. praying. Because they're praying. That is exactly right. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people There's don't know that. There's a black person who, two whites together. Yes, because black people and white people want the world to be safe for everybody, right? Yeah, okay, so today we talk about prayer and we talk about Martin Luther King, okay? So that's my children's time for you guys today and I hope you have an awesome day off tomorrow. Yay! Okay, say bye. Bye! bye.
let us offer up our confession. We have not believed you or trusted in your power. Lord, help our unbelief. We have stained our souls by our action and inaction. Cleanse us, Lord. We are broken by disease, bruised by the sins of others, weakened and unable to repair ourselves. Heal us, Lord. We ignore your call to center our lives in you and so are deaf to the hopes and cries of the poor, the sick, the needy, and the earth. Ground us, Lord. And here is your assurance. When we confess our broken ways, God abundantly pardons. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In name, the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are, are all, all forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. And let me now offer to you a pastoral prayer. Lord of all light, we lift up all our joys and our concerns to you, said and unsaid. We know you know us to the fiber of our beings. You know our deepest longings and our greatest blessings. We ask that our eyes be open to see you with us always during the hardships and the joys. Show us the way forward, O Christ. Show us the way from the darkness of waiting to the light of your presence. Send us the spirit that we might perceive you in the words and deeds of others, and you may be perceived in others through our own words and deeds. Journey with us while we become even more faithful witnesses to your wise and transforming ways. And let us pray the prayer that our Lord and teacher taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And this is our scripture for today. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I read a story not that long ago about a church that was filled with teetotaling Methodists. And these Methodists in this congregation prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed that that disreputable bar across the street would go away. And then one day, the bar was struck by lightning and it burned down. And of course, the bar owner sued the church and said it was because of the congregational, congregation's prayers that his bar was burned down and destroyed. And of course, the congregation responded with, no, no, we are not responsible for your bar burning down. And at the end of the case, the judge said to both parties, I don't know how I'm going to rule yet, but I do know one thing for sure. 
You, this bar owner, believes in prayer and the congregation does not. I thought that that was a cute, funny story about prayer. Do we believe it works or not? How do we pray? pray? What do we pray for? And so this Sunday is the second Sunday that we are going to discuss what it means to be a disciple. When Jesus says, follow me, we follow Jesus. And what is it that Jesus does that we also need to do in order to journey towards the summit of Everest or journey toward the heart of God? Well, one of those things, I don't think the most important thing, but certainly a very important thing is prayer. And so as I shared with you last week, the way of Jesus is the way of love. And this first tool, we are meant to tap into this way of love. And we can't give away this way of love unless we first have it, right? I mean, you can't give away what you don't have. And so first and foremost, we must plug into God, receive the gift of love, so that we can offer the gift of love to others. In other words, love God first, love neighbor second. Now, there is no one way to pray. We might find a prayer in a book that, we, that really speaks to us and we might use that for our prayer. Some of you might uh, do a daily devotion and in that there's a prayer and that is the prayer that you offer God each day. Some of you uh, memorize prayers that you really like, and I can tell you that in our, my AA groups, we always end with a prayer that we all have memorized, and that is the serenity prayer. There are times when we pray in the shower. There are times when we pray at stop signs. There are times that we pray while we're doing yoga. And of course, there are times that we pray while we are, we are worshiping in church, whether it's here in the sanctuary or in your living room right now. Sometimes we even um, pray prayers that come out of scripture just word for word, exactly as they're written such as I can think of the 23rd Psalm and, of course, the Lord's Prayer. So here are some things that we might pray for. We might pray to give thanks, to share our gratitude to God. We might pray for um, peace or um, that, that we might have hope. Uh, we might pray for God to care for our concerns and, um, and fix those concerns. And, of course, we might lift up our own needs, our own problems, and seek direction. So now, those are the things that we, we find ourselves praying for. And you know, that's, that's typical, that's, that's human nature, that's pretty much where we're at, especially when we share, for example, our joys and our concerns. But let's reflect on a moment what prayer is not. Uh, Reverend James Harnish, in his book, A Disciple's Path, which is actually the res resource that I'm using to, to do this series, writes, he writes this, let's begin by clearing the deck of the idea that prayer is a magic trick by which we manipulate God's power to get what we want. For example, some believe that a parking space 
might, um, might be an answer to a prayer, or even more dangerously, some might say that the curing of a debilitating disease is the result of prayer. And this is what we call outcome-based prayer. Now the problem with outcome-based prayer is that this definition is going to turn people away from faith faster than you can blink an eye. And let me tell you why. Say, for example, a family has a son who is off fighting in the Iraq war. And their neighbor also has a son who is off fighting in the, in the Iraq war. And let's say they are both very um, devout praying people and they both pray for their sons to return safe and whole and unharmed. And what if one of those sons does come back safe and not, not a victim of any kind of harm, but the other family has lost their son to the war? And the person who has lost their son to the war might ask a, a very fair question, in my mind, why the heck does, does God answer her prayers, their prayers, and their son got to come home, but God didn't answer my prayers? Does God think their prayers were better than our prayers? Did they pray the right way, and we didn't pray the right way? Why did God why did God save their son, and why did our son have to die? And that is a question that will turn people away from faith, that will turn people away from God faster than you can blink an eye. By the way, there's a terrific little book written as sermons that was written during World War II by Reverend Leslie Weatherhead, and I do strongly recommend this little book, and it's called The Will of God. And so outcome-based prayer can be, we can feel that it's soothing when, um, when our daughter with cancer is cured, but is it helpful? for those whose daughter does die of cancer. Flo shared a, a story during Advent. I had asked her to share a story, and, her, and, and I asked her to share about the gift of peace. And she shared a wonderful and moving testimony that uh, when she was faced with a situation of her own mortality, she had gone to a sanctuary and prayed to the cross that was on the wall, Lord, I am okay with whatever happens, but please just, just give me peace. And she said that a kind of peace just washed over her. And she felt a way that she had not felt prior to that prayer. And now she uses that story as a testimony of God's presence. And she draws on that experience to continue and deepen her faith in God. God gives us four gifts. He holds these gifts out to us. And it's our choice to accept them or not. And we have learned what these four gifts are during the season of Advent. They are, of course, hope, they are of peace, they are of joy, and they are of love. If we pray to receive those gifts, if we pray for those who we pray for to know and receive these gifts, then I believe that's the prayer that God answers. 
I shared with you last week that, you know, um, may I remind you that we are faced with enormous turmoil today, stress and fear. And we don't know what to do with the state of, the, of this country. What is the best way forward? And we desperately pray for, and I might add that it, this is a very natural prayer and a, and a prayer just of human nature, and we might pray something like, Lord, save us from the people who would cause us harm. Let those who create the mayhem in the world be held accountable. Let our country be healed and unified. And here's the truth. Here's time of confession. Although I wouldn't say these words out loud if I were to pray with you for our country, in the back of my mind I might be saying, and let us be unified in the way of my own political perspective. That's just natural. It's natural for us to, to go that way. And that's why it's so important to practice prayer on a regular basis. Our, our strength of prayer comes from how often we pray. And we, what if we pray that prayer that I just said and we are not unified? What if I pray that prayer that we just said and we, um, be, we, it doesn't come true and the country is falling apart and what do we say about God in that case? God, where are you? Have you abandoned us? My goodness, we read that over and over and over again in the Psalms. Where are you, God? And it challenges our faith. Prayer is not the process by which we get what we want from God, but the relationship in which God gets what God wants in and through us. Let me read that again. Prayer is not the process by which we get what we want from God but the relationship in which God gets what God wants in and through us. I shared last Wednesday um, that on Wednesday, January 6th, while I was driving home from church at the intersection between 503 and 501, while the insurrection was happening. There were people who were waving the Christian flag. There were people who were waving an American flag that was desecrated by Trump's portrait, portrait over the stars and the stripes. There were people, of course, waving the American flag, and there was that dreaded yellow flag, don't tread on me. And I do believe that it was the spirit that nudged me. And the spirit nudged me, and, and, um, and I was moved to turn around and go back to the church and get my robe and get my stole and go back to the intersection between 503 and 501 and get out of my car and go to one of those corners and kneel in prayer. I really do believe that it was the Spirit nudging me to do that. But I'm afraid to say that I missed that opportunity to obey. I did not do it. I don't know about you, but I feel like I miss so many opportunities to obey God. And I think that was one of them. And, and that is one that um, 
I really mourn that I did not do. You know, immediately after the offering um, for the rest of this series, I have all of us, and I hope you are doing this at home, I have all of us say the prayer of our covenant, which our founder of our, our denomination, John Wesley, shared with the world. The world was his parish. And so I would like to say those words to you right now. And I'd like you to close your eyes and hear them. Even though you're going to say them in a little bit, I would like you to truly hear these very wise words, this very wise prayer. Lord, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what thou will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. My word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear, as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. My word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Now when I won't forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus be my guide and hold me to your side and I will love you too. participate in the healing reign of Jesus through our pledges and offerings given at this time. With humble hearts we give our share and work for justice everywhere Proclaim God's love to all hands and feet. Amen. Let us all commit to a prayer of John Wesley. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. 
Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. Draw us in the Spirit's tether, for when humbly in thy name two or three are met together, thou art in the midst of them. Alleluia, alleluia. Touch we now thy garments in. The invitation is simple. Come and eat of the feast. Not a meal to nourish the body, but to feed the soul. We receive the bread and the wine connected to the ages to the saints of old who felt unworthy, to the seekers eager to know God, to the teenager who wonders, what is this all about? To the child who eats with unburdened faith. Woven into this time, the hopes and the tears of generations. There is great joy. No one is turned away, for God is the host. As disciples used to gather in the name of Christ to sob, then with thanks to God the Father, break the bread and bless the cup. Alleluia, alleluia. So now bind our friendship up. God is with us in this place wherever you are and in our hearts open yourself to the nudging of god we, we feel, feel the breath of the spirit. spirit remember god made flesh jesus who taught us a new way let us take a moment of silence Tender, transforming God, you have invited us to gather at this table. To taste the feast, the same abundant promises offered to our ancestors in faith. Time and time again, you have offered your grace. Even as we have stepped away, you continue to call us to be your people. You have never left us. We praise you for second, third, and fourth chances. You are ever patient, always faithful. We give thanks for this time of celebration. For the one this meal remembers, for the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. With those who have gone before us, whose hands touched the bread, whose lips embraced the cup, we worship you, we glorify you. And this is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all, send your spirit to 
wherever you are, so that those gathered together in this sacred moment may know your presence. And as we eat the bread and drink of the cup, make us one with the saints and one with our sisters and brothers in faiths around the world. Be, Be with, with us, God, God not, not only here, but in every moment of our lives. Help us to know you, to be guided by the Holy Spirit, and to live Christ, now and forever. Amen. All our meals and all our living make us sacraments of Thee, that by caring, helping, giving, we may true disciples be. Alleluia, alleluia, we will serve thee faithfully. Gathered with his friends, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. And now please partake in the body you have before you. And in the pouring of the wine, Jesus said, this is my life spilled out for you. Whenever you do this, remember. And now is the time for you to drink from the cup of life. Let me offer this prayer of thanksgiving. Creative, connecting God, you have sent your spirit and made us the body of Christ. From childlike faith to youthful energy, from middle-aged mindfulness to elders' wisdom, we thank you for this time, for this time to remember you. Amen. another in Christ's name and may God's arms surround you and embrace you and may the Spirit bind you together in love and Christ our Lord dwell richly within you and hollow your days. 
and your nights, both now and forevermore. Amen.